This wedding was an assignment for my Religion 2 class in Catholic school. This one's wife. You've got no mates because of her. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Narcissists interfere with your life. When the narcissist first comes along and you're a target to become the intimate partner primary source, many of you will have been subjected to love bombing. This is where the narcissist monopolises your time, sends you lots of messages, buys you gifts, takes you to interesting places, tells you how wonderful you are, possibly has a lot of sex with you, dependent on the counter of narcissists that they are. You think you've met somebody wonderful. They like the things that you like. They talk about having children with you, getting married to you, moving in together, start to make plans to move in together, perhaps do move in together with undue haste, plan holidays, want to meet your friends and family, want to introduce you to their friends and family. But as time goes on, you'll find that as this individual, who you don't realise is a narcissist, draws you into their world, your links with your friends and family start to become all the more tenuous. This is because the narcissist wants you all of the time, because you're the one-stop shop for the prime aims. By having mainly one person to control, life becomes a lot easier for the narcissist. It enables the narcissist to get all of their fuel more or less in one place, ditto character traits and residual benefits. Yes, there are others in the fuel matrix, and if you'd like to understand how different narcissists have their fuel matrices constituted, I'd encourage you to read my book Pipelines for a greater understanding of the varying proportions and emphasis that the narcissist has upon those in the fuel matrix. But for most unaware narcissists being lesser and mid-range, the intimate partner primary source is the, is the main provider of the prime aims. Therefore, this means that the narcissist wants that individual spending a lot of time with them, and therefore it follows that individual is not going to have as much time available to continue pursuits with friends and family. Now, of course, when you start a romantic relationship over time, you do spend more time with that person and perhaps less time with family and friends. That is quite natural. But when it comes to the narcissist, it happens far faster, with friends and family being elbowed out of the way at an early juncture. This is done, as I mentioned, so that the narcissist can gorge, if you will, on the prime aims but also it's to ensure that friends and family don't get in the way of the ensnarement of the intimate partner primary source by perhaps querying the speed at which the relationship is being moved along in the way that William did when he warned Harry about it going too fast. Even where it's well-intentioned, the suggestion that perhaps things ought to be slowed down, that you perhaps take your time with this new person that has come along and entered your life, is a threat to the control of the narcissist, meaning the narcissist needs to do something about it. Furthermore, as that individual becomes more and more ensnared by the narcissist, they may well then engage in behaviours which others can see are problematic for the primary victim. They try and speak out. But unfortunately, they're met with resistance by the victim, who is subsumed within their own emotional thinking. And of course, that then makes them an enemy of the narcissist because they've said something adverse about that narcissist to the primary victim. Which then means that the narcissist doubles down on the efforts to keep that friend away from the primary victim, often smearing that friend telling the primary victim that they've perhaps hit on them or that they've said awful things, etc., in order to drive a wedge between them. And Harry, who finds himself in the sustained devaluation, is in precisely that position. As Jessica Gibb writes in The Mirror, Prince Harry's lonely UK visit as old pals won't see hippie that hates pre-this-one's-wife's life. Prince Harry will likely spend a great deal of his time in the United Kingdom alone as his army and school friends have become distant, a royal expert has claimed. The Duke of Sussex, 39, will travel to London to mark 10 years of his highly successful Invictus Games. The ceremony will be held at St Paul's Cathedral on May the 8th. It has been claimed Harry will check into a hotel room alone in London during his trip, instead of staying at a royal residence or visiting friends. 
pausing there, that in itself is a clear indicator of where Harry finds himself. He can't stay at a royal residence because family are displeased with his conduct. Friends don't offer him someone to stay because he's not maintained those friendships. He hasn't maintained those friendships because it's become more difficult with him living in another country across the sea. But in these days of technology, telephone calls, Skype calls, Zoom calls, etc. should allow the maintenance of those relationships. But this one's wife has stopped him from doing so. She stopped him from doing so because she doesn't want Harry having a connection with friends and family because it gets in the way of her control of him. Royal author and expert Tom Quim claims that it's possible that he will not meet any of his old friends from school and the military since they are part of the old pre-this-one's-wife's world that Harry hates to revisit. During an exclusive chat with the Mirror, the expert said the Duke's army friends felt betrayed by the way that he wrote about military service in his memoir, Spare and now they feel like they have nothing in common with him. This, of course, is fairly common in relation to how the victim's behaviour is impacted upon by a narcissist, resulting in those friends thinking, why bother with him? He never calls us. He's actually dissed us. He's not the person that we once knew. Mr Quinn explained, Harry has a few friends from the army and from his days at school, but they are part of the old pre-this-one's-wife's world that Harry hates to revisit, so he'll indeed spend a great deal of his time in the UK alone. His military friends feel he's betrayed them by writing about his military service in such an unmilitary way, and his old Etonian friends don't like the whole new woke Harry. Conservative, with both a small and big C, they see the new Harry as a tree-hugger, with whom they have nothing in common. He also claimed that many of Harry's old friends don't like this one's wife and blame the Duchess of, Trans of, of Sussex for transforming the Duke into what one of them called Harry the Hippie. The expert added that one or two old clubbing friends have suggested meeting up with Harry, but he is said to be reluctant, as he is aware of how much he has changed. Or rather, he's reluctant that he will get a smack bottom when he returns to Monte Shitcho if his handler finds out that he's been hanging out with those horrible, horrible friends. Mr Quinn went on to say, The truth is that Harry has reinvented himself in a way that just doesn't work for his family or for friends from the past when he was a very different character. So he will spend most of his time in the United Kingdom, alone, in a hotel. But constantly on the phone to this one's wife. Naturally, this one's wife will be hoovering him to ensure that he's kept under control, that he isn't meeting up with somebody that she doesn't approve of, and that he's not sat there wanking like a chimp. The author did not mention which friends Harry might meet or avoid meeting while in the United Kingdom, but last year, royal expert and correspondent Rebecca English said some people in the Duke's friendship circle are genuinely disgusted that he dished on his family. Thus, Harry finds himself in a lonely position. Friends no longer wanting to bother with him as a consequence of the change that has been effected upon him by his wife. The behaviours that he is engaged in meeting with disapproval as a consequence of what he was encouraged to do by his controlling wife. Ostracised from his family as a consequence of his conduct, which he engaged in as encouraged by his controlling wife. He has lost family. He has lost friends. And this will be all too apparent to him when he does return to the United Kingdom and finds himself sat in a hotel room thinking, should I crack one off after all? I have nothing else to do. I have nobody to go to bonkers night spot with. I can't slip out for a kebab with old red trousers to abracadabra. Those days are lost. And it might just cause him to reflect upon what he has lost and possibly to realise who has caused that to happen. As it is, he hasn't got any mates, none that is going to bother with him, and it's all because of his handler, his wife, the narcissist. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.